Alright troops, sup Scott here and welcome back to the channel. This is episode 7, I believe, of the Blackburn Rovers career mode. Now, I'm in an absolutely amazing mood at the moment as I've just watched the Liverpool Tottenham game as well as Rangers have just been knocked out of the Scottish League Cup. So I'm in a really good mood. I'm really looking forward to doing this episode. It's about 11 o'clock at night, but do you know what? I'm not caring. It's a late one. I'm recording this. Let's get into it. I am buzzing. Just quick confirmation that Johnson has been sold for 640k and we get 450k of that in January, as well as a scout departing. Youth squad monthly report then. We've got two youth players still in our squad. As you can see, Guffrey, he's looking good. Like His potential is really good, but his overall just isn't there yet. Um, once he gets better, once he gets good enough, we'll probably promote him to the team and then it's another right uh, a winger that we can bring into that squad. Nathan Dalton, unfortunately, I don't think is going to be good enough. His potential just isn't high enough. It's just not get going up whatsoever. He's high. His maximum potential is coming down, but his minimum potential is not going up. And he's only 50 overall, which just simply isn't good enough. So we're going to release Nathan Dalton. Now, from the youths out in Scotland and England, we have Arthur Robb, who looks pretty awful. I won't lie. We're going to reject him. And Jack McDonald, who also doesn't look great, we're also going to reject him. Going into England then, we've got Frederick Terry, who looks abysmal. We've got Finlay Holt, who doesn't look awful, but doesn't look great. We've got Louis Barber, who I'm definitely going to promote. Six foot two, looks like he could be a centre-back, with 76 to 94 potential. Don't know what his overall will be just now. I'd, I'd imagine it'll be in the 50s again, not in the 60s. He's 15, so he's going to have a lot of time to improve. And hopefully he could be our new first choice centre-back. If he has good passing, then he could even be a ball-playing centre-back that we're all looking for. Ed Lucas doesn't look good enough. And Joel Weber also doesn't look good enough. So whilst we're doing this, let's just see what the new addition to the youth squad looks like. So as you can see here, Louis Barber, he's 56 overall at 15, can play left back, centre back or right back, which is actually really, really good. Um, high defence work rate is great, which means I can, if I w decide to, change him to a centre back, which I think I will. 6 foot 2 at 15 is mad. 75 physical and 75 pace as well, so he's going to be a quick centre back. 76 sprint speed, 74 acceleration. He's going to be rapid. He's 75 strength as well, 73 stamina and 80 aggression. I love seeing that high aggression stat. In terms of defensive stats, not great. Not great yet, but of course we can improve them. What we'll do then is we'll change his development plan to centre back, which should only take two weeks anyway. It does. And then from there we can work on improving those defensive stats. Just before we get into the game against Luton here then, we've had an offer from Club Bruges for Lewis Holtby, who of course is 30, so I will be looking to move him on um, very soon because of the, the problem being him being 30. Um, so I think I might accept that and let him go in January and bring in a new cam in January possibly. I think that could be what we do. Yeah, I'm going to accept that. I'm going to accept the two point. We'll try and get a bit more money, actually. We don't need to sell him. Um, but if we can get, like, between two and a half to three million for him, I'll be absolutely buzzing with that. So, going into the game against Luton, then, I've decided that I wanted to make two changes to the squad. Or three changes, sorry. I've brought Tribal out for Travis. Travis wanted to play, which is understandable. Um, however, I don't want to drop Naylor because he's been playing really well for us. So I'm swapping Tribal out for Travis. Richardson is coming in on the left for Brereton. And Elliot is coming in at Cam for Dak. The Luton team then, it's a 4-3-3 they're playing. So finally, again, not a 5 at the back, which is ideal. They've got Slugger and Goal. They've got Craney, Pearson, Lockyer, and Norrington Davies at left back. You've got O'Kane, Morell, and Dewsbury. Dewsbury Hall at centre mid. Lua Lua, if you remember him from back in the day, on the left. Collins up front and Clark on the right. 
should be three points. I don't really need to play as strong a team as what I have, I don't imagine, but I've decided to do it anyway. We've got a big break in between this game and the next game anyway, so let's get the three points. Come on, Blackburn. Chiller Mulgrew tries to send Richardson through here, and he's done very well, very well to find Richardson again. Adam Armstrong with the volley that hits the bar. That is so unlucky from Armstrong. Can he get the shot away? He can. Wow, I was not expecting that. I thought he was going to hit that wide. Charlie Mulgrew that started with an amazing ball over the top to Richardson, who managed to find Armstrong in the middle of the box. Hits it on the volley, hits the bar, unfortunately. And then Elliot, Harvey Elliot, does well to keep the ball alive. Keep the attack going. Plays it back into the box, as you can see here. Armstrong takes a shot, bounces off a defender, takes another shot, and finally it finds the back of the net. Armstrong having three shots in the one attack, and he finally manages to put it in the net. Very nicely into the top corner too. Love that from Armstrong. Outstanding play. Come on, Blackburn. <laughs> Naylor wins a header. Who would have thought they would see the day where a 5 foot 5 Naylor would find the ball? Here's Neil at the edge of the box then, played it inside to Armstrong, who finesses it, and that is a solid save by Sluga to be fair to him. Adam Armstrong at the edge of the box, takes a touch, take it away from the defender, finesses it, curls it round two defenders, and Sluga gets a strong wrist to that. Just can't seem to get the ball off Luton here, and they've almost scored Kaminsky with a save. I don't know why, I was constantly just trying to hold it, hold them down and I just I just couldn't seem to get a touch on the ball to knock it away to release some pressure. That run to be made to play it into. Oh and it looks like Luton are through on goal here with Morel. And they are, they're through. Luton have equalised. The defence was left very, very wide open there. I don't know where Lennon was, but out of position. And unfortunately Niambi just can't use his pace to get back in time. Morel found himself one on one with the keeper and he slams it into the top right corner. Noth nothing Kaminsky can do there. I know I blame him a lot but right there there's not a lot that Kaminsky can do to stop that. Elliot does well to win the ball back high up the park here. He's going to try and send Adam Armstrong through on goal. He is. He's one on one with the keeper. Surely he's going to finish it. And of course he does. I thought he might have been offside there. I won't lie. I thought I'd seen the linesman put his flag up. But apparently I didn't. And Adam Armstrong manages to find the back of the net. Glad to see that he's starting to find his form again. It was starting to say that he had poor form um, in the squad hub. Which... I don't really understand, it has still been scoring goals, yeah, he might not have been playing too great but he's still scoring goals which to me makes a striker seem like he's on form but he's finally getting consistent amount of goals and I'm just so happy with it honestly. Come on Armstrong. I have time and we're up 2-1 and I'm feeling quietly confident so I'm deciding to change the team up, use a formation we've not used yet this season. I want to use this game to sort of see how we could line up in the future if we get an injury to Niambi, who of course is our only right back at the club. Naylor can play there, he doesn't lose a lot, uh, he doesn't lose stats even playing there, although he doesn't have that position listed, however I don't want to be using one of our best holding mids that sort of wants to drive forward and do really well for us at right back when a 5 star 5 star as well, it just wouldn't make sense. So this is the way we could line up should Niambi get injured and this is the way I want to see how the team performs like this. He's found Cosgrove, Cosgrove plays it back to Mikey Johnson who takes the shot and that is a great save by Sluga. Sluga's had a pretty decent game to be fair, doesn't deserve to be getting beat, however Mikey Johnson that is a great low driven shot and Sluga does very well to match it. Ske Manages to get back across goal to save. What the f happened? Kaminsky just flung the ball up and headled it. What? 
Kaminsky literally just flung the ball up and headled it by himself. There's Neva then. Harvey Elliott. Driving with the ball. He's found Richardson down his left hand side. Richardson using his pace. Can he whip it in? He can! There's Sam Cosgrove. And that is 3 1. Sam Cosgrove getting back in amongst the goals here for Blackburn Rovers. Richardson doing very, very well down that left hand side. Using his pace. He's not he's not gifted with absolute rapid pace, but he has enough. And he manages to break down this left hand side with heavy touches. Plays a driven cross, a cross goal, and it's basically a tap it is a tap in for Sam Cosgrove to get back in amongst the goals for Blackburn. It's been a while since he scored, I believe. And I'm just glad to see that he's back on the score sheet. There he is, with another two ex SPFL players, Charlie Mulgrew and Mikey Johnston. You love it. You love to see it. Luton have played a really good ball over the top and it's found Collins and it's found the back of the net. I wasn't expecting a ball like that over the top. I'm feeling really confident with this formation, I won't lie, I do feel confident. It's just the issue of the balls over the top, which as you would expect in a 3-5-2 is the issue. You can see there, it's just not get the pace to get back and put a foot in. I think it was Lennon that was chasing. It was. It's probably, I think he's our quickest centre back as well and he can't get back so that's, it's unfortunate but we're doing well. We are doing well in this formation. I'm really enjoying it. It's just one lucky ball over the top and they're full on goal. James Collins gets his fourth goal of the championship season. With a final substitution what we're going to do is we're going to bring Ben Brayton on for a bit of pace down this left hand side and bring Richardson off as he's just getting a bit tired and his pace isn't being as effective as we'd like it to be. Travis has done well to win that high up the park. He's crossed it into Adam Armstrong. It's a goal! How is that went in? Sluga for every save that he's made that has been outstanding in this game. He's made some top saves. That one is a massive mistake that he's made. Adam Armstrong had the most impossible angle to score from and he's managed to put it in the back of the net. Adam Armstrong gets his hat-trick in the 90th minute. You'll see it here. Travis does really well. He press high, win it back, crosses it in. Armstrong takes a touch, hits it on the volley. It bounces off the hand of the goalkeeper and into the roof of the net. That is unfortunate for him. Very unfortunate. I don't think he deserves to concede there. Um, he's had a great game and it's just unfortunate that his defence has let him down. But that is Adam Armstrong's 14th goal of the championship season and I think he might now be top goal scorer in the league. Unfortunately, Lewis Holtby and Club Bruges couldn't agree on terms. So Lewis Holtby doesn't look like he'll be leaving in January just yet. We've also got Barber to change to a centre back now. Let's see if it improves his overall. I imagine it might. It does. It puts him at 59. It's 15 years old. This guy could be huge. This could be a huge player for us in the future. He's quick as well, so if we're playing that three at the back, he'll be the player that we need to come back and win the ball back deep. This could be good. This could be very, very good. With a big game in Cardiff coming up next midweek, I've decided to play a fully rotated squad with a new formation to see how this plays out. Um, simply because I want to play my strongest team against Cardiff. It's midweek, it's going to be a hard game. Um, and I feel like this team should be able to do the job against Rotherham. Of course, in real life, this game has been played tonight, the night that I'm recording this. And Blackburn Rovers actually won 2-1 with a 98th minute winner from who else but Adam Armstrong. So our team getting into this game against Rotherham is Kaminsky, Bell, Williams, Ayala, Rankin, Castillo as the back line. Then midfield three of Tribal, Naylor and Johnson. A very defensive midfield, but I feel like Naylor can be the one to push us forward and um, hopefully get a good few assists. On the wings then we've got Richardson and we've got Elliot. And then at centre forward in a false nine, I'm playing Bradley Dack now. I don't know if he can play there. We've all obviously got strikers that should be able to play there, that can play there, but I just feel like giving Bradley Dak the chance, um, even if it's just for the first half, and then we'll sub on a striker. Um, but this is the team we're going to go with for Rotherham. As you can see with the Rotherham team, again, not a back five, which makes me absolutely buzzing. 
in gold, we've got Blackman, who I believe is the same Blackman who used to play in goal for Celtic years ago as like a, a third choice keeper. Left back, Matok, the rest of the defence is made up of McDonald, Ikui, I think it's Ahikui, Ah Ahikui, Jones, Barlasa or Barlaza, Wiles, McDonald, Lindsay, Ogbeen and Hurst. It's a great ball over the top to Lindsay and Rotherham have found the lead. Unfortunately, Lindsay down his left hand side has been causing quite a few problems early in this first half. Um, and he is the man to take the lead. You see here, a great ball over the top. Ranking Castillo, who isn't a natural defender, we need to remember, he is a winger, um, is a, playing as a makeshift right back. And unfortunately, a makeshift right back can leave big gaps in the defence, like you can see there. So with that, I've decided I want to go with our tried and trusted 4-4-2. I'm bringing Rubiero on for Bell on the left because he's on a yellow card and I don't want him getting sent off. And I've also brought on Cosgrove for Johnson. I decided to play Naylor as that centre mid beside Tribal in front of him. He's crossed it into the back post and unfortunately Cosgrove just isn't able to attack it. What a goal! Oh my god! Tom Tribal. Just had nothing short. I thought, do you know what? It's plenty of space. Let's just let's just hope. Hit and hope. What a strike from the German midfielder. Wow. Easily my favourite player in this series so far. He's been absolutely solid in midfield, winning the ball back, his passes. That strike post and in from Tom Tribal from so so far out. 30 35 yards, left footed strike, curving in, posting in, what a strike, that puts us level, we needed something magic to happen in this game, and a piece of magic has happened, what a strike, first goal of the, of the campaign, and what a way to get your first goal, poor defender from us again, and he's given a penalty for that, are you mad, a bit of poor defending, letting him get too close to goal, yes, but a penalty for that, are you sure? It's a nudge, yeah, but he's still in possession of the ball. Play advantage? Oh, that is poor, that is poor. Hurst to take. Saved by Kaminsky! What a save by the goalkeeper. It took so long to dive that I thought he had let it go in. Because I did go the right way, obviously. It took so long to dive, but that is a great save by Kaminsky. What a save. Sadly, he's managed to play the ball in behind, and it's a great save by Kaminsky. What a save. He's, I've not been his biggest fan, but recently he's definitely turned up and been a much better goalkeeper. Now we're on the counter-attack, thanks to his save. Elliot tries to play in behind. Matok is really getting on my nerves, I won't lie. It's leaving big gaps in our defence, as you can see. Like that, and sadly, oh, converts. It was coming, it was coming. Rotherham's way of playing seems to just undo our whole defence. Every time they play a long ball over the top to the wingers, and it just leaves massive gaps in our defence, and I don't understand how. Um, I don't understand, like, it's just such massive gaps there. A nice ball over the top, to be fair, and then it's a very nice ball. Again, nothing Kaminsky can do there. Not going to fault him, he's had a great game. Um, I suppose he should put his hands up the way there instead of out the way, but at that range, I mean, there's only so much he can do. Kieran sadly, our third goal of the season makes it 2 1 Rotherham. Full time then, Rotherham 2, Blackburn 1. I tried to experiment with the team and it didn't pay off, and unfortunately, we've lost because of it. I don't think we deserve to lose, however. Blackman had an absolute blinder of a game, getting an 8.3 rating and man of the match, which doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Had a great game, he was outstanding. Just before we get into the Cardiff game, we've had another transfer offer here for Lewis Hopi. Um, I'm going to try again and get at least 2.4 to 3 million for the German. 
get into the game against the Bluebirds then, as you can see, their starting 11 is Day, Bennett, Nelson, Benkovic, who is an ex-Celtic player, of course, I've got to mention that, Bakuna, Hoylett, Rouse, Pack, White, Moore and Glatzel. As you can see for our team then, it's the usual suspects, I suppose you could say, and Kaminsky, Ribeiro, Mulgrew, Lennon, Niambi, Tribal, Travis, Brelton, Holtby, Johnson and Armstrong. I'm really enjoying having the three camps to pick from and Holtby, Dak and Harvey Elliott. I, the one I enjoy the least, I won't lie, is Dak. He's the one I'd want to move on the most, although Holtby could be leaving. Um, Dak, I'm just, I don't get along with him in this game, at least at Cam. He's, his finishing doesn't seem great, his passing doesn't seem too great and um, it just doesn't feel agile enough in my opinion. But this is the team to take on the Bluebirds anyway at the Cardiff City Stadium. Let's go. Glatzel with a very nice flick over the defender's head. He's crossed that into Moore and wow that would have been something special. I was not expecting that whatsoever. Burton. Can he cross it in? He can. Holtby! Oh, that's so unfortunate. I thought Holtby had given us the lead. He has! Holtby has given us the lead. Adam Armstrong does very well to keep the ball in play. I think the Cardiff players thought the ball was getting out of play and switched off. Armstrong does a 180, turn around, finds Holtby at the front post and plenty of space and he just blasts it home, as you can see here. I thought he had scored with a header, he hadn't. Armstrong does very well to keep the ball in play. The Cardiff players seem to switch off. Holtby at the near post smashes it past the keeper and we find an early goal come on Blackburn so at half time then it's been a very boring game the only one real chance um, I did have a goal chopped offside for Armstrong but it was, wasn't it wasn't like even as if it was like a close offside so I'm not going to add it to the highlights just we don't need it we don't need that sort of um, highlight. I don't like adding just anything as a highlight just to make the video longer. Um, if it's a half chance at least then I will but we've not really had anything. It's literally just been the goal. That's been it. Um, I'm deciding to bring Bren Burton off on the left for Richardson. I've been really enjoying Richardson and he's been in good form so I've decided do you know what we're going to give him the try. He's now got 5 star 5 star as well so that could be really fun with that with that balance, sprint speed and acceleration, it could be very, very decent. Another corner then. Hope be to take. In swinger, Lenin up for it. Surely that's a tap in for Mulgrew, it is. Lenin done very well with the first header. Both centre backs getting their head on the ball. Charlie Mulgrew, made captain for this game. Is that my bias for the fact that he's one of my favourite players of all time? Possibly. But he's made it count as captain. He's got up, won a header. Not really any doubt that he was scoring there. Wasn't challenged at all, really. And um, makes it 2-0. Charlie McGrewby's first goal for the club coming back from loan. And I'm absolutely buzzing about it. God bless Charlie McGrew. I really hope this isn't a serious injury. I don't think it will be. I'm not being forced to take him off. But I don't want to risk it getting any worse. We're going to bring Sam Cosgrove on. Uh, no, we'll bring on Gallagher. We'll give Gallagher some game time. Gallagher's going to come on. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, he can do the job for us here. Bennett finds Hoylett. Marwan, the B-Tech, Marwan Fellaini has found Moore. And Cardiff have a goal back. I've accidentally just skipped it. Kiefer Moore has scored his fifth goal of the championship season. And the B-Tech, Marwan Fellaini, I have no idea who he is, but he's been absolutely causing trouble since he came on. I'll need to search him up after this game, see who he is, but he's it's, it's been doing well for him to be fair. I haven't looked yet at Adam Armstrong's injury. All we can do is hope, beg, that it isn't a big injury. It was his shoulder, so I don't imagine it'll be too long. Um, if it's in the months, I'd imagine maximum maybe two. Not much longer than that. Let's just have a look and see. Adam Armstrong has suffered a bruised shoulder injury and will only be out for five days. That's what you want to hear. That is great. Obviously that means he will miss the next game as it is only two days away. Um, however, for the next episode he'll be back. Which is what we need. We need a le the leak 
top goal scorer back firing in all cylinders and hopefully hopefully can keep us in this relegation spot as you can see Redden did drop points so we're actually four points clear of them now which means if we slip up we'll still get a point ahead of them but we don't want to be slipping up especially not against a team like Huddersfield unfortunately this game this episode has been recorded over two days and I have something that has come up that I need to deal with so I'm going to have to sim this game and hopefully we can get the three points it might make the video a little bit shorter but tomorrow um, and tomorrow we'll try and get three episodes up to make up for it so let's just quickly sim this I've had to make some substitutions as you can see Kaminsky, Bell, Ayala, Lennon, Niambe, Naylor, Travis, Richardson, Elliot, Brereton and Cosgrove up top the Huddlesfield team then will be Pereira and Go Brown, Edmonds, Green, Saar, Dehaney, Coroma, Aiton, Vallejo, Rowe, Daly and Campbell. So let's sim this and hope for the three points. I'm not confident, I won't lie, I did want to play this game. We've got the three points, a 2-0 win, Ben Brereton getting two goals, dominated don't we feel on possession, well not dominated but slightly slightly edged them on the possession part of the game and one shot more with one chance more but you can't complain when you're getting two goals and three points which is crucial as you can see that has brought us to December so now that we're in December we're in fifth place as well we've overtook Birmingham City which you love to see and that means in the next episode we playing December and I've looked at the fixtures we've got some big games by the way so you don't want to miss tomorrow's episode oh, I've recorded this in advance I think this is the first episode of the day so this afternoon's episode you don't want to miss we do have some very big games coming up I won't lie I won't spoil it but we do have some big big games coming up we also have a monthly scouting report for the next episode as well, so don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Leave suggestions down below for some January transfer suggestions because we're going to be doing some moves in January. We've got some players being sold, we've got some money being raised. We need some transfers, so leave transfer suggestions in the comments down below for January. And until next time, I shall see you later.